An exposure control plan is the key component of OSHA's Bloodborne Pathogen Standard. The exposure control plan requires employers to identify employees who will require training, personal protective equipment, necessary vaccinations, and other protections. In this section, we will discuss creating an exposure control plan. Our objectives for this section are to describe the general requirements of an exposure control plan and identify the procedures that relate to the development of an exposure control plan. Let's start by thinking of examples in your facility of how employees could come in contact with blood or other potentially infectious materials. Write down some examples on the following slide and then click Submit. Each employer having an employee with occupational exposure, as defined by OSHA standards, must establish a written exposure control plan designed to eliminate or minimize employee exposure. The exposure control plan must contain at least the following elements. Identification of jobs and tasks where potential exposure to blood and other infectious materials is evident. Outlines the current protective measures being used. The procedure for the evaluation of circumstances surrounding exposure incidents as required by OSHA regulations. Employers must ensure that a copy of the exposure control plan is accessible to employees in accordance with the appropriate OSHA standards. An exposure control plan explains exactly what the employer will do to minimize exposure to bloodborne pathogens. This must include at least how the employer will annually and as needed review exposure determination, utilize engineering and work practice controls, handle exposure incidents, provide hepatitis B vaccinations, provide training, maintain housekeeping standards, maintain medical records, use signs, labels, and personal protective equipment. The exposure control plan must be reviewed and updated at least annually and whenever necessary to reflect new or modified tasks and procedures which affect occupational exposure and to reflect new or revised employee positions with occupational exposure. The review and update of such plans must also reflect changes in technology that eliminate or reduce exposure to bloodborne pathogens and document annually consideration and implementation of appropriate commercially available and effective safer medical devices designed to eliminate or minimize occupational exposure. The exposure control plan must be made available to the assistant secretary and the director upon request for examination and copying. Exposure Determination Every employer who has employees with occupational exposure must prepare an exposure determination as part of the exposure control plan. So what does occupational exposure mean? Occupational exposure is how an employee's duties could expose them to blood or other potentially infectious materials. It is important to note that exposure determination must be made without regard to the use of personal protective equipment. The exposure determination must contain the following. There must be a list of all job classifications divided into two groups. Those job classifications where all employees have occupational exposure 
in those job classifications in which some employees have occupational exposure. If all employees are potentially exposed to bloodborne pathogens, you do not have to list specific work tasks. If some employees have potential exposure, the specific tasks and procedures that cause exposure must be listed. A list of all tasks and procedures or groups of closely related tasks and procedures in which occupational exposure occurs and that are performed by employees in job classifications must be listed in accordance with OSHA regulations. Here are a few examples of job tasks for medical staff that could involve exposure to bloodborne pathogens. The task of handling patients could cause the employee to be exposed by coming in contact with blood or other body fluids. The task of working with equipment containing blood or bodily fluids could cause the employee to accidentally come into contact with potentially infectious materials from spills, splashes, and routine handling. The task of handling vials or other containers of blood and bodily fluids may result in the breakage of the containers, which may lead to contact with blood and other bodily fluids. There are many other tasks where potential exposure to bloodborne pathogens is evident, but it is important to start thinking about your workplace and the job tasks where exposure is possible. Exposure determination must be made without regard to the use of blank. Click the button below to view a sample exposure control plan.